Welcome to Plant, Plant Today, Today with Amy Ray. Okay, we have a few chores to get done around the house today, different places in the garden. The first thing we're gonna do is move these two hydrangea pots to my front yard because I have another hydrangea up there and I think they would just be a nice color pop up there. It's where I originally wanted them, so we're gonna move them. Bo's gonna help me out. it up a little bit. I wanted to quickly mention that I planted these hydrangeas in these pots two years ago, May 2020, and they had horrible transplant shock and one of them completely died. So I had to move them and I just assumed they didn't work in this spot. So Funny thing is though, the two on the outsides that I just moved up here have been sitting in this same pot and they eventually came back and now they look gorgeous. So I took this opportunity to put the one that was in that tall gray pot in the other one to finally have my three pots up front like I always wanted. As the um, spider plants grow bigger, and the sweet potato vine fills out, Hi. it will, sweet potato vine, um, they'll eventually kind of camouflage those pots. I could clean them off a little bit, but they kind of blend into the dirt more. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be training the sweet potato vine to continue to sprawl out. I might, I might plant another one. I have another one propagated that I'll probably plant right there. It doesn't. We took we took that purple queen out of that black pot and it's got all the dirt that was attached to it just kind of sitting underneath it and it's just sitting on the ground. Looks like it. We tried to like loosen it, it up a little bit, but um, I told Bo like that purple queen will grow anywhere, so it doesn't really matter. It will be happy. We have a sprinkler that comes up like right here and waters all of this so it will remain happy the hydrangeas will get water i think we might test it out actually to see just how much they get back there it comes from back there but see there we go so it also comes just let's go so we have this sprinkler head here mostly 
hitting, I think it's hitting all those three pots relatively well. It's not the best, could be better. It's also hitting me right now. I have been talking about changing the sprinkler head because it's a 360 and I need to change it to a 180 to where it just waters that way. Is it like squirting? Like it's squirting all the way around, right but yeah. If it just watered that way, then we would be sure that those got well watered. <laughs> I propagated some sweet potato vine off of a different plant. Just cut, cut it, stuck it in water. It's got a million roots after a few days. And so it's, it's not very long, but I'm going to place it right there just so it'll fill in just a little bit more on that right side without me going by a whole nother plant. The next thing I'm going to plant are these lamb's ear. This is one of my favorite plants of all time, to be honest. Um, I had a bunch of it back along my back fence in the backyard. Um, and even when we had snowmageddon, this stuff had snow on it and still looked just as beautiful. Um, but it all got ruined when we had our pool dug. Um, I didn't realize they were gonna go that far back. And when they did the decking, they threw cement all over my lamb's ear and it all died. So it, um, I bought some two new pots. They've been in these pots for, gosh, probably two th months, three months. So I'm gonna clean this all up. This, this dead stuff just easily comes off. And this is the natural thing that the plant does. The bottom leaves die off. So it'll do this in the ground as well. Um, but it multiplies um, pretty easily on its own but not too rapidly, like it's not invasive. It does it just enough to where you enjoy it. And it's a pretty, pretty color and texture um, in the garden. These leaves are so soft, you just wanna rub them. They literally feel like an animal. Love this plant. I just wanted to mention, so the cold hardiness uh, goes all the way down to zone four and it says that it's full sun, but I have put this in mostly part sun locations and it does wonderful. Um, I think it would actually get super droopy if we have too much sun here in Houston. It just gets way too hot. So I'm going to put it in a, a part sun, part shade location here in the front yard. Um, it says it gets 18 by 24, space them about 24 inches apart. And like I said, they do multiply over, over time. Okay, it is the next morning and I just wanted to show you how everything was looking this morning. Nice and happy, which makes me happy. These hydrangeas are the kind that you could try to manipulate the soil and acidify it to make them turn blue and purple. Um, I will say this one that I had in that tall pot last year was more purple. Um, and I didn't really do anything to the potting soil then, but we'll try, probably try to play around with that in the years to come. Man, the birds are just really loving this morning. Um, I wanted to touch on these hydrangeas that I have up here as well. These are the Blushing Bride variety that I have in pots here. And here, this one is just really going at it. Gorgeous. So they start out like really white they do kind of fade into a more blush color. Very true white at first. 
So up in these pots I also have some um, begonias and a luscious colocasia and uh, bay rose mask, alocasia. Okay, so this is kind of where I left off yesterday. I planted the lambs ear here in the front and I needed to water them in. They did, I forgot to water them in yesterday. Um, and I need a third. Like, I don't know why I only bought two. That is unlike a gardener. You need to buy odd numbers of things. Um, so I do need a third to probably put right here. <clears throat> or maybe even this way. We'll see. But also, you saw me pull up the bubblegum supertunias that I had here because I don't think they're getting enough sun. So they were just really leggy and I had trimmed them back a couple times, but they were still leggy. So I went ahead and pulled those up and I have some coleus that I'm going to be putting kind of like right here. I'm not going to space them too far because this kind don't get that big. Um, and I don't know what else I'm going to put here just yet. This bed is just always going to be kind of a work in progress depending on the season. I'm also going to be putting some of this bugle weed um, here on this side. This is really, really pretty variegated option. Um, this is down hardy down to negative 40 part sun most people call this a juca but it's a really pretty variety it has little tiny purple blooms but it will creep and eventually kind of meet each other here It'd be good on this back back section I think but I am having a little bit of a hard time planting around the tree because of all the roots so they, it won't be this close to the tree. It'll kind of be like the lamb's ear. I'll move them down a little bit. That's the plan for now. And I also had planted some impatience along the front of this boxwood hedge. Well, those are gardenias. Um, they have not bloomed yet, but hopefully those will bloom soon. They're getting buds. Gardenia did tr try to bloom this year, but not a lot. Not a lot of blooms this year. Last year they were amazing. But these, uh, this frost-free gardenia sometimes just looks messy after it blooms because the spent blooms are pretty yucky. That's about it for this project. Hydrangeas um, sometimes are said not to grow well here in Houston, but I've actually had really good experiences. Granted, I don't put them in the ground, but I do have a neighbor down the street that has them in the ground and they're doing wonderful. Um, one of the things we deal with here with hydrangeas, and this one is starting to get it and I'm gonna need to spray it, is this, um, this leaf spot. It's like a fungus and you just have to if you start seeing little spots like that, you stay on top of it, spray it because it spreads very quickly to your other hydrangeas um, and it'll make it look really ugly. Um, I haven't had it kill a plant, but it just, it really affects the look of them. So I will spray that with like the co a copper fungicide and that nips it in the bud. All right, that's it for today. I, um, I really hope this inspires you guys to go plant today.